Hello and welcome to Commendable Commotion. I'm Matthew Tanamelji and I'll be talking to some fascinating people about some equally fascinating topics that need more commotion. Today I'll be talking to Philip Emo. Philip Emo is the producer and screenwriter of several short films. His short films Breast Friends, Speak to Her and Cease have screened at various high-profile film festivals, breaking the Best Irish Short Gaze Film Festival Award, Best Writing, Royal Television Society Awards, and Best Irish Entry. Creatively as a producer and a writer, he is most interested in coming-of-age stories, comedy dramas, and horror. Check out a link to one of Philip's short films, Breast Friends, in the description of this podcast. Filmmaking is a topic that often needs more attention and appreciation given towards it, as do the arts in general. So I hope you enjoy my conversation with Philip about these topics and about his excellent work. So, yes, the first thing I would like to ask you, which would be very interesting, how did you get into filmmaking? Yeah, good question. Uh, So yeah, I was 15 years old and I was, yes, I was in transition year and I think up to this point I'd already um, loved watching films um, and then I, I, I knew I had to do something for that President's Award, if you remember, where you have to like, you know, you have to do like something sporty and something charity based and all that. And when I came across the option to do filmmaking and it wasn't then about the President's Award, it was just like a light bulb moment of like, oh, cool, I can actually make films. Uh, and I joined a youth filmmaking group, uh, Tally Young Filmmakers, really great youth filmmaking group. Uh, so we would meet every Thursday evening after um, after school and like make little films. And that ended up sort of kind of developing my interest further. And uh, I kind of built my portfolio through that, through the films I made there, because uh, there was a lot of great filmmakers at the same time. So I was very lucky. And then I used that portfolio to... Uh, apply for IDT, the National Film School. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how it, how it has worked out uh, for me and still still kind of making projects, but then working as well. So working in film as well, so. And is there a sense of nostalgia you get when you remember those days of like, you know, joining the, the film club, I think you mentioned, and just in general kind of discovering, uh, I guess, your interest in film is that kind of mm-hmm. a, yeah, because I mean, a lot of people describe that, like, would you kind of agree with that when you look back on those days? Or is it kind of like, uh, you know, all a continuous thing, if that makes sense? <laughs> yeah, it, it's a good question. Yeah, I think I I don't really look back too much as a person, but uh, I definitely, I definitely, enjoy, like, there have been times where I've been in a project that's so much more intense in terms of the workload compared to what it was then, where it was just a lot more kind of, Willy nilly, just like uh, like we were still trying to make good films, and we did at times, but it was you know probably not as massive an undertaking as it sometimes can be uh, now. But uh, at the same time, I do think that one of the things that is enjoyable about film making or music or whatever it is that is kind of creative is like you kind of create that you have that still have that childish glee about you, um, but obviously you know real life can take over in a way in terms of you have to still make a living and all that so yeah no I see what you mean yeah and was uh, wise words and um in terms of like then you know uh leading on from that uh would you be able to tell people like you know what what work you've done since then because I know you've been involved in a number of projects and would you be able to give an overview of those projects or some of them at least yeah sure yeah so um so I kind of made a lot of short films in college um and I think that's really what film school is all about like you know you can learn anything in a classroom these days online but you what you do get from film school is you can meet other great filmmakers and make stuff with them um so I made a fair amount of short films in my time there and even when I left I sort of still kind of made films at the college a bit um and then kind of just the first year out of college was quite tough. Like it's quite hard to just sort of, it's not like other courses where there's sort of a clear trajectory of like, okay, you do get your job here or whatever. Um, but eventually um, I got 
work in film. So I'm over here in London now uh, working in, I'm actually working te- television technically. Uh, and then I try to like do my projects on the side of that. So like last year I made two kind of independent short films. One of them received a little bit of funding from uh, the Dunleary Rockdown Council. Uh, now, not a massive amount, but it was still cool to kind of get money to make something uh, for the first time and then um, kind of still trying to develop short film projects um, but obviously it's just harder because like you know you're working full time to find the energy never mind the time to do that uh, so kind of still trying to um, always make things um, and then potentially thinking of doing like a master so I can just go back to doing it full time again so we'll see what happens. And would you be interested in the kind of academic study of film as well as like obviously practically making films? Yeah, I think to a degree, yes. I think um, you always can find out, you know, new things about it. But like I kind of more so just treat it like having an interest in like what's going on in the world, like reading about not just reading about like history and different things, because that can all funnel into oh, maybe I'll find a project that's about that certain thing, you know, for the future. Um, but yeah, I think that the, the thing about film is, the great thing about it is you're always learning. Like I'm not maybe, an, I'm not really an academic, but I definitely believe in like you always should, you always can be developing your craft and improving. And you should never think after you've just made one good thing that, oh, well, I have it all cracked now because there's always, every project is so different because it's not just a different script, it's different personnel. So it, that's why I don't think I'll ever get bored of doing it. You know, I, I'm not going to be one of those retired 60. I think I'd be just continuing to make films if I, if I could, you know. Yes, yeah, very good. Yeah, that's always a, a good sign because, I mean, some people, you know, go into their, you know, until they die making films, you know. Um, and so in terms of, like, you know, your thematic uh, interests, like, what would draw you to a project as such like whether in terms of writing it from scratch or mm. producing a film or being involved in any way what, what would draw you to a project? yes that's a great question because I think it's something you should always ask yourself especially when you know a lot of projects you do if you're interested in film um and music is kind of the same as well because I've done a bit of stuff with music um you really if you don't have that engagement with the project then the hard graft of it won't be won't be worth it um what I look for most is I think character uh I'm a big sort of character driven uh story lover like as opposed to plot stories um if that makes sense I think uh I like press friends probably a good example of that where you know it's a coming of age film and it's very much about the character driving the story um I like coming of age stories a lot because I think so much so many significant things happen to us in such a short period of time, like that it just feeds films and stories really well because uh, there's a lot to kind of explore there. Um, and I think I like, uh, I like LGBT stories, I think because, well, I suppose I'm, I'm gay myself and I, maybe we're always looking for ourselves on screen, but also I think, uh, think you can find unique films there um unique stories that haven't been told um trying to think yeah I think also just quality quality stories as well like I'm not um a genre person per se but I do you know if a horror is really good or if a musical is really good like those two genres in particular I think damn like it's such a, a unforgettable experience you know so I think that the quality of of story is what counts um probably mostly Yes, yes, I see, I see. So, like, in terms of, um, so you'd be someone then who, like, you'd put primacy in the idea of uh, expressing yourself creatively or in some ways making something uh, out of your own experiences then, not not just kind of like, um, uh, I don't know, making something for the sake of it, but you'd want to put your own experiences in it, your own feelings in it, that kind of thing yeah exactly and that that shouldn't be mistaken for making films or writing scripts that the characters are exactly like you in the exact place you grew up because you may actually find that a story across the world actually resonates with you just as much as a story in in Dublin you know so um I think that it 
it's about the person caring so much about the project. They don't always have to have like a personal, like Eleanor Rogers who wrote Breast Friends. She is definitely, she kind of more thing, write things that are based or inspired on her own life. I don't think you have to be like that, but I think that it should, you should emotionally understand the, the characters in the world you're writing about still. Yes, yes. And uh, on that note, are there any, um, you know, particular figures who would inspire you? I know uh, Eleanor Rogers, uh, you know, being one. Any other, any other people, you know, sort of um, historically or, or uh, mm. today, um, artists, uh, filmmakers in general, uh, who'd inspire you in, in that regard? Yeah, it's a good one. It's so hard to answer those, isn't it? Because there's so many people you just kind of, yeah, um, you kind of flick through. And um, I mean, I know it's a, it's a very, like, very popular answer, but I still think Stanley Kubrick was the best filmmaker of all time because I think that he made a brilliant film in every genre. And like, I'm not someone who believes in making the same project over and over again. I think, you know, you want to, be looking for what's kind of fresh and interesting um so I think he's he would definitely be a big uh a big inspiration I think that the, his dedication to his projects as well he's an obsessive dedication that I think is is quite inspiring like I think I even read a quote from his last night it was like you know you're either going to go all the way or you aren't it's basically the point and I think that is to me like what a good a good filmmaker is they don't settle for anything they don't compromise you know they they believe in the project so devoutly and when you are working with a director who has that belief and drive then it it just passes on to you because you want the the project to work out for them as well so yes yes um now out of out of uh, his great filmography, any film in particular that would jump out to you from Stanley Kubrick? Because I know that, you know, he's such an inspiration for everyone, including myself and you, of course. So any particular projects that would particularly inspire you from him? Yeah, I'd say 2001 Space Odyssey because I'm a big cinema person. Um, and you see that in cinema. Um, I don't think it leaves you. I think you can watch the film over and over again and still find something new in it, which if you look at, to me, that is a great film. It's like it's like you can always go back to it, and you're still uh, you're still engaged with it, and you're still finding new things in it. And I think that's the case for um, a lot of his films. But Stephen one's the one the main sense, the one that mainly stands out. But I do love Clock of Orange and Paths of Glory and The Shining as well. So it's he's just an incredible list of films, you know. Yeah, yeah, and in terms of then like. Uh... You know sort of thematic readings that people put into his films and many other films in general uh would you be a fan of that kind of thing um would that be something that you know uh you would read about in your spare time uh you mentioned you know reading about historical topics or maybe academic topics uh to you know uh, fuel the creative process uh would you be interested in that kind of yeah. like literary analysis as well metaphorical thematic analysis yeah, well, I think also just kind of going to the history point, go back to the history point for a second, like, I think one of the reasons I like history is because the story, it's just good stories as well, you know, uh, like I'm reading at the moment a book about the fall of uh, Berlin 1945, and there's just endless amounts of, like, stories to tell, um, and I, yeah, I think it is interest. I think that, it, you know, in terms of the best films, obviously the films can do different things, so you could like a film that's really light, and you need those films as well. You know, you couldn't just watch 2001 all the time. <laughs> but uh, I think that it is, again, kind of that thing of, I'm actually, I am, I'm interested in those things. I like them. You know, I don't watch them as much as I did probably when I was a kid. But um, I enjoy sort of the fact that you can have disagreements about what certain things mean. And uh, like, I think that's the same with today. If you think of like the really great filmmakers, someone like Bong Joon-ho, like, he le he doesn't tie everything up. He doesn't answer everything, and I think that makes for a more interesting uh, film. You know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, did you see the short film uh, that he made for that little uh, triptych kind of um, production? Uh, I think it was set in Tokyo. That was very much like that, where the man turns into a chair. Oh, or something. Like but yeah. it sounds cool. I have to check it out. It that was a good cool. one. Is he the one who did um, Parasite? 
yeah yeah he did parasite um and yeah for me like i think him and perhaps celine scam scamma i think i hope i'm pronouncing her second name right um are the two directors i'd be most interested to see at the moment in cinema i mean you still have some old great filmmakers like martin scorsese but they're like people they usually make really interesting uh really interesting films I see. And who's the who's the second person you mentioned? Sk- Skiam? Well, yeah, I hope that's her second name. Uh, Celine Ski- Celine Skiam. Let me get, make sure I get it right. Uh, Celine Skiama. Uh, okay. She did uh, Porsche, the Porsche of Lady on Fire. Oh, yes. Um, yes, yes. Uh, really good um, period romance uh, film. Um, it's definitely worth watching. Um, yeah, I think I, I really like her films, but there's a lot of great um, in, independent uh, filmmakers out there, so. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. And it's refreshing to see, you know, a, a young generation uh, making uh, sorts of independent films and that sort of thing. It's uh, refreshing and interesting. So, like, what part of the filmmaking process, either in pre-production or production or post-production, mm-hmm would you be interested in most now i mean like obviously you know you can multiple multiple parts i mean it's certainly possible um but yeah 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 yeah. any particular aspects of the process yeah it's it's a good question i mean i i wouldn't say i'd say probably development of like the script and um the script and the idea is probably earlier on the most exciting because it's you don't have to deal with the financial and getting crew and all that. And it's just kind of creatively developing a project. Um, I think that's kind of the most creative and the most exciting part as a producer. Um, I think that editing, maybe I can, if I start to make feature films one day, we can pray. Uh, I, can, I think maybe I could also enjoy that more though, uh, because I think it's, that really is where the film is made. Um, you know, when you when you see the transition from a first cut to the final cut, it's a great thing. But um, it is really the overall journey of making it for sure, though. I mean, maybe that's a cliche answer to give. But if you take something like Rest Friends, just because I know you've seen it, is, um, you know, when you I love the process of like it just started off with Eleanor had this draft of a script and then I read the script and I gave my feedback and showed it to someone else and gave the feedback. And then we start bringing in people to work on it. and the fact that you do all that stuff, all the shooting and everything, and then you end up in the edit and then you end up showing to people, it's quite the, I think you have to enjoy the whole long journey, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And it's definitely a collaborative process as well. Um, But in terms of the script writing uh, that you mentioned Mm -hmm. there, what, like, I mean, when you're writing a script, for instance, how would you mm. sort of go about thinking about the narrative structure and how you'll structure the narrative and that kind of thing? Because that's uh, been something I've been particularly interested in. Uh, you know, if you could uh, share any of your uh, insights on that. Yeah, well, I suppose only only up to this point, if I, I've made uh, short films, I haven't yet written a, sorry, I've, yeah, I've only written short films. I've never written a feature. Um, and they're quite different in terms of story structures. So, uh, with a short film script in terms of structure, I think you approach it through you're kind of you're capturing a moment in someone's life. So that can be um, just one one change usually that happens. Like something is introduced to them that kind of flips their world upside down, and then you process the change that happened after that. Um, I think that a lot of it actually, in my opinion, happens subconsciously though. Do you know, as in you kind of just um you know you have your you've, you you all, all already are going to plan a story with the correct structure in your head because we're kind of in tune to do that as human beings you know I think sometimes you can get too married at the earlier stages to like oh well how does this link with this and this and this and like I think at the first stage you've actually just got to uh, know your characters know your idea and once you've worked out the bones and the flesh of it then you can afterwards go actually we put that here when oh oh, do we need this as a closing image rather than something else you know um but yeah I I try to firstly just focus on like what it is that I'm 
writing about like what like the not not focusing too much on structure until I at least have like the first draft done you know yeah yeah exactly and um, is there ever like a danger of um I don't know for anyone like becoming too preoccupied mm -hmm. with the um I don't know with the thematic idea rather than like focusing on how the narrative will be structured and then kind of mm. worrying that, you know, uh, not as good a project may emerge then and, and that kind of thing. Is that ever, uh, you know, an experience that, that you can relate to or, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm sure many, many people can, um, you mm. know, do you ever think that's a concern for aspiring filmmakers, uh, yeah. filmmakers in general? Yeah, I think like, like when I am saying kind of, I just want to know what it is. It's not just from like, oh, this is what the story is about, but also like, you know, if you have all these different ideas, I think first in your early draft, just I think you should not be too critical, right? You should just, because if if you have, haven't shown the script to anyone, you know, I think first what you do is like, you just have to throw everything at the wall and then start taking things down the wall. Because if you don't, what's happened to me is that it's it's too much a start stop process before I've even actually written the script if you understand me so I think firstly write the script and like don't worry about it being a perfect draft like make it as good as it can be but at the end of the day it's going to change anyway but uh if you spend too long trying to uh change it before you've even shown someone I think you can sometimes end up wasting a lot of time I mean in terms of writing, I, I don't do it as frequently as other people though. So maybe I'm not the most knowledgeable on this subject, but I know that I've seen myself and other people um, take too long to perfection it. And what you sometimes realize need to be, realize it's not going to be perfect. And also that it's, it's a long road, isn't it? Like maybe the script you write at 25 won't be as good as the one you write at 45. Um, I think the bigger issue is trying to actually just stay away from distractions because writing is such a topic that you need to be uh, an activity that you need to just be immersed in so to kind of actually step away from the online world um, other things that you kind of want to do in your life but maybe aren't as pressing right now do you know what I mean like um, so yeah yeah, yeah. And I was listening to an interview where a screenwriter said that, um, you know, sometimes getting over like the kind of um, inertia that some people may experience when they're starting to write a script, like sometimes it's just important to like write the word the on the script just to get going or something, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So there can be kind of distractions going on in your head or other things that uh, you're doing that may not be as pressing. So, yeah. Uh, would you agree with that kind of, um, uh, you know, what other ideas would you have for like kind of getting over that inertia when when trying to write mm -hmm. something? Yeah, I think touching on what we were saying earlier, um, I think when you're starting off your first few things, it's it is better to probably, you know, go from personal experience because then you're writing about what you know about. So you should should be able to find it a bit easier, you know um like I wrote a script and I just need to find time to redraft it because I brought another producer on board who gave me all this good feedback um and I need to find time to do that but it's about it's like it's about sort of the online hookup world and stuff like that and um I've had experience in this world so it was quite easy for me to write about it and uh I think that if you're young starting off maybe try and try and do it that way try and think of like experiences in your life or someone that's close to you and kind of think oh well that was quite interesting and then you can take it somewhere else um but I think that can that can help with the initial sort of hurdles um and then also I think just trying to create deadlines in your own head or with maybe even friends like if you tell a friend if you're not good with deadlines and tell a friend to like say like you need this draft by you know, a month's time, just so, someone to give you that extra push, I, I think can be good because it's a bit easier maybe in college or school. We're so used to having people give us those deadlines that when you have to do them yourself, maybe it's a bit harder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it is, it is. Yeah, no, it's um, it's easy then to kind of get into that mindset. And yeah, I see what you mean. And that's good advice, definitely. Um, 
what other advice would you give just to you know aspiring filmmakers you know in terms of um not just with script writing but in terms of like you know the the production process in general um yeah is filming is filming stressful because i know that can be sometimes a stressful part yeah. of it. and if so what advice would you give on that uh yeah i think well firstly just i suppose kind of carrying on from my last point i'd say like the first the first thing is to make a film that you feel has to be made um and like that doesn't always have to and again that doesn't mean it has to be bloody you know realism uh you know uh or or something that's really depressing you know not that those films aren't good i like those films but it can mean that people just um elner's a good example uh, is like she kind of makes films of romantic uh sorry um comedic kind of female characters i don't think you've seen much of before especially in ireland right um and i i think that if you feel that need to make it in the first place it makes all the stress a bit more manageable whereas if you're just kind of making something because you think someone else wants to or or some some other kind of pressure you're putting on yourself for for psychological reasons maybe uh then it's then it's not worth it um i think the big thing for me has been working with people i trust um because the going will get tough you you'll run into hurdles like you mentioned shooting there i've been on shoots where things have gone wrong like equipment has broken the rain has started falling uh you know it it, it can get very difficult but if you're with people who back you and you back them to find a way out of it then then it's much more likely to work um now that can be hard because sometimes you may just find yourself thrust on a project with people you you know you don't particularly like or trust but then I think just be professional and just try and get through it as best you can but for me the best projects have been I've had good personal relationships with the people I've worked with so we've managed to we've managed to to meet those issues head on and even though films are very very important you know they're not life or death either so you have to find that balance of not killing yourself with stress too like work as hard as you can once you've worked as hard as you can the way I look at it is then and you've left it all on the table then you you've nothing to feel um embarrassed about or annoyed about with yourself you know because I I've went over the top with projects too like I probably went projects I should have given more and then there's always projects where actually I was like you know what like I was doing too much then I was trying too hard and actually sometimes you're actually less effective as well if you let the stress get the better I've seen directors who you know they gets a bit difficult and they they actually cannot really cope and it doesn't it just feeds off people quite negatively I think and also if you're if you're starting off you're probably getting people to work to you for free or, or minimal money so they really you'd really want to treat them with proper respect and uh trust them to do their jobs otherwise then then you're not made for you know film just go write some go write some music in your own room or something <laughs> yeah i see what you mean and um on that note uh your musical work uh would you be able to talk a bit about that because that sounds very interesting because you know filmmaking and music it's uh you know, it's an interesting combination. Um, would you be able to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, sure. So um, I managed this band. Uh, I won't say who it is, but um, I don't anymore. But I did for like the good part of last year. Um, and I'd be, I'd be open to kind of doing it again. Um, I got asked by someone I know to manage their band because I said I was interested in getting involved in it. And um, it was quite interesting to see, like, learn about a different area because, like, I'm not a musical person in the sense of, like, knowing how to play anything that well, but it's like anyone else. It helps me get through the day and it's as important to me emotionally as film is. But um, I, I, I definitely enjoyed sort of, um, so I, I managed this band for a bit, just enjoyed sort of the new experience of it, you know, like um, trying to... Um, help develop their image um and help kind of give feedback with regards to like songwriting and kind of help organize them as well because musicians aren't the most organized people in the world but um I think I, I find it too difficult to sort of especially like only recently having moved to London just kind of balance all the different things that were going on um but definitely an area I'd like to get involved in again and it's a good I think it's good for film people to not just 
be involved with film sometime because you know there's films take a while to get made and funded and all those things so sometimes actually it's good to have whether it's theater or music or uh whatever it is some other um interests and occupations you know yes yes uh, exactly and the with, with post-production and editing um is there kind of a musical thing there if that makes any sense like some people have described it, i think it was uh Orson Welles I heard in a documentary say that uh, it should be like music and how everything flows together um so mm. would you I, I you know if you've experienced in editing um which I, I believe you do uh would you agree with that or you know uh yeah so I'm not really an editor myself so I can't I can't speak too much to it but I will say that um it the one big biggest thing you probably learn about film when you when you start to do it is that editing is is just everything you know I mean think of like Star Wars the most famous film of all time like you know it, apparently the footage for the first Star Wars film was I'm sure you've heard stories like absolutely rubbish and then uh, uh, I think it was because George Lucas directed that one I don't think he's, he's a great writer I think he's a great director but an editor kind of came in and like apparently really like saved the film you know and I think um it's it's just where the film is made so like there is definitely an art form to it you know I, I can't say I fully understand it yet because I'm not usually the one who's sitting in there all the time um I can only more so speak to like just yeah how how important um how important the process it is and also I think the most as a producer a big part of my job has been managing relationships so in particularly direct relationships with the actors the first AD the cinematographer and and the most high stress relationship in spite of the fact that the filming's finished at this stage is actually the editor because it's such an important position and there's there's so many big decisions to be made um so again i think that um in the same way a director has to find the right producer who cares about their project and the right dop who cares about the project they, the editor is is so essential to that as well you know because it's the wrong personality too it's just you know that those long hours in those edit room uh you know <laughs> can come tr quite tricky um but it's certainly fascinating seeing a film's just completely changed to like you know you've got the first cut and there's things in it that are so wrong and I suppose I, I'd say to people starting off as well don't get too disheartened with your with your first cuts because they're the rough for anyone do you know like um uh, but by the time you get to the the final cut you'll see a massive improvement you know yeah no exactly exactly and that's uh, that's good advice definitely and um in terms of like you know uh where you see yourself going from here what ambitions mm -hmm. you have with uh writing or any other aspect of the film uh process um what sort of stuff do you want to keep on doing or completely new mm -hmm. things that you may want to do um if you would yeah so i'm happy to kind of make short films and there's a few projects i'm starting to work on um i i started to produce a film i produced a film for the first time with uh killian casey who's also went to idt but a few years below me and i'm sort of hoping to kind of build a bit of a relationship there and make more things with him um and then continually always just trying to look for material and scripts and directors to collaborate with to make short films and then the step big step after that will be you know um taking the leap up to uh features and television shows i mean that's where the big dream is um but it's, it's a long game you know you got to be got to be patient ready to ready to stick it out so and uh, for for making that leap to you know feature films and television uh, etc so is making short films a, a common route then that, uh, that that people would take uh, what other routes would there be as well if if, if any yeah yeah I, I don't know what the other routes are I I I I suppose these days maybe this like web series I've never looked into it myself but um like web series I think are maybe becoming more of a thing um maybe if you've uh I don't had experience in another area like say like your theater or something like that or um uh yeah some 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 other area and you've had good success in that and you can transition over I still think short films are the the most common way that I'm aware of but definitely if there's another way 
I will find it <laughs> and come back to you. Um, and I, I, I think as well, like, you know, uh, there's always, there's so much content being made these days that if you have a good enough script and you have the resource there to make it, you just never know where it could end up, you know, because there's so many, so many things being made, so. Do you have any experience in uh, theatre? I don't, but I kind of a bit like music. It's kind of like, oh, I'm interested in it and I would like to work in it more. I mean, if, if theatre costs the same amount as cinema, I would go every week. But unfortunately, it's very expensive. Um, so like, I'm in London now and uh, I just love the theatre so much. And um, but yeah, I think uh, I, I think as I was saying before, it is it is good for film people to to have even just an active interest because you, you, you never know, like I suppose another a unique way of how a story, um, how a filmmaker kind of came to success was um, Phoebe Waller-Bridge because she had her one woman show at the Fringe, Admiral Fringe, and then it was kind of, you know, bought and then became a TV show. So, um, yeah, I think always for me, I, I'm looking to collaborate people. They, they don't always have to have loads and loads of film experience, you know, like for the first time I made a film last year, this girl, um, Sheila, she wrote it and she acted in it, but she was theater background, you know? So it's more about kind of creative talented people with the right character rather than, oh, they, they went to this film school or something, you know? Yeah, exactly. And it's uh, it's a promising sign how like it never has to be rigid, you know, it can be someone yeah. more of a theatre background or more of a, you know, even a musical background, uh, that kind of thing. It can blend into various uh, different art forms. So it's great to hear. Well, Philip, it's been very interesting and uh, it's uh, been, you know, very enlightening hearing about your uh, career path and uh, your future uh, ambitions. Anything else you'd... Um, like to add or any more advice for aspiring filmmakers um or or actually in fact um do you think you know like platforms like youtube or you know um anything like you know, digital platforms in general podcasting mm -hmm. platforms um how would you say those kind of you know uh forms of recent technology uh help the kind of creative um opportunities people can have uh, for making anything yeah, I think they they do because um, you know the, the the creator of the thing has a chance of getting it out there in their own way. So like we we just published Breast Friends online, and you know over three hundred thousand something people viewed it now, which is crazy. Um, so I think that it can give you that extra chance to reach an reach an audience, and then the kind of flip side of that is there's such a um, an overflow of things being made that making yourself stand out is is the hard part as well so it's kind of more opportunities but with that you know comes more competition so um i think there's definitely bonuses out there though because if you want to get your film seen you know there's definitely an online audience um there yeah absolutely and uh before we finish up any any other advice uh for aspiring filmmakers or filmmakers in general artists in general because uh, you've got some good advice uh given in this interview already uh any more because it'd be great to hear uh, any advice you have or any uh, words of wisdom uh you know more more words of wisdom yeah i wish i i don't know if i have any words of wisdom Matthew, but uh, <laughs> um i i think uh I think like don't forget why you did it in the first place you know what I mean because there are times I've had like not now but there have been periods where I've just been like oh you know I, this is just not working or maybe I need to I don't know study study something and just do become a teacher or something and just uh <laughs> you know take it easier life but like I think just forget remembering and particularly it helps when you try and watch films because even I think film people now with this we spend so much time on Instagram or whatever it is and it's like you actually forget like you know, when you go see, go to the cinema and stuff like that, you remember like, oh, like this is actually good and just continue to make things, you know, um, even if it takes time, like I'm developing projects now, but who knows when they'll get filmed, you know, if you, if you're constantly having some kind of project on the go, it kind of makes, um, it makes you back yourself more that like, okay, like I'm still, still doing this, still believing that um, this can go somewhere, so. Very good, very good. Now that's uh, definitely very helpful and useful and uh, enlightening in general, this whole interview. So thank you very much. Uh, very interesting. Uh, great inspiration, you and your films. Uh, so thank you very much. And uh, let's just see here 
how do you stop recording? <laughs> uh, is, is it the square thing? Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Philip. It's been great talking to you. No, thanks for having me, Matthew. Let me know how it all goes. Um, if there's any other way I can help out with it, just, just give me a shout.